Hey guys, it's Samir from MMOs.com, though a quick first impression to gameplay video for Arc Age Begins. A uh, free to play mobile MMORPG developed by XL Games and published by uh, Gameville. Spend 10 to 15 minutes on the ground checking this game out. Next time, if you guys do want to play Arc Age Begins or just learn more about it, do check out the whole review on MMOs.com on the link below. So let's go ahead and start right now. You can see all these uh, little pop ups in game. I got past the game's tutorial, and here we are in our little hub world. From here, you can kind of pick what stages you want to go on and whatnot. And obviously, the game is based on the PC MMORPG Arc Age. Out of core gameplay, you will see in a moment. Let's go jump right into our saga. And from saga, from the saga menu, we can see our stages. And you can see it's a very linear game, kind of on par with other mobile games like Heroes of Incredible Tales and whatnot. So despite bearing the arcade name, it's not a traditional MMORPG. Instead, it's kind of like a hero collector where we have a bunch of characters. You can see my characters right now. And you click start battle, hero selection. You have the four, four of your characters in a single party at once. Obviously, we're going to be rocking all the waifus on our team. That's the play. I can turn the rock golem in the back, but I can't turn the waifus. I want to turn the waifus, but I can't. Anyway, we got all the waifus, and let's start the battle. Uh, you can see there is a stamina system over there as well. The five meats, I guess, are our five stamina. Join a guild and grow stronger with your comrades. Actually, Gameful is not calling this an MMORPG. They're calling it a MORPG, a multiplayer online role-playing game, rather than an MMORPG. They do boast actual MMORPG features, stuff like raiding and territory control and PvP options like that as well. I'm not sure why the background is oddly red over there. It's a little glitch. Uh, the graphics are actually not bad at all either. The game is built on Unreal Engine 4. Of course, we got that delicious, spicy auto button in the background, and it plays the game for you once it's on auto. Honestly, I, I did the tutorial already, and what I like the best about this game right away is its actual graphics. It's actually pretty polished and it looks really nice, and the combat and the animations are also quite good. But of course, you got that spicy auto gameplay in the background, which kind of makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit hands off, as you say. But then again, most most of these mobile games are pretty hands off. But there is a certain charm to kind of leveling up your team and picking the right abilities for your characters. I would say the actual characters themselves you can customize more so than a lot of other of these multiplayer uh, hero collector style games. There's indi individual talent trees, gear you can upgrade and gear you can equip for them, as well as runes and other good stuff like that. So there's actually a lot of different ways to customize your characters and progress that way. I do imagine maybe some of the more difficult content you have to actually aim the abilities yourself. And there's actually some strategy involved too if you have to actually do it. We turn off auto, I'll show you that in a moment. We're fighting a boss right now, I guess, on this on this level. But these are early levels anyway, so it's gonna be brain dead easy. But I'll show you that in a moment. It's it's still weird that they would use the arcade name and still not have the the sandbox multiplayer MMORPG you know elements. Personally, I do like you know, even on the mobile game front, I don't play too many mobile MMORPGs. At least Lineage 2 Revolution is a persistent world. It feels like an MMORPG. Whereas this, again, is, is set in this, this linear stage-based progression. But the core combat is kind of cool. When you cooldowns are up over here, for example, you can actually aim where you want to land it. We can do our, our AoE attack on this guy. So the way you target attacks are still kind of neat. And we can do our fireball over here. This is the AoE as well. So, again, aiming attacks is kind of cool and kind of relevant when the content is difficult. But for now, it's going to be really, really easy. Even healing teammates, again, one, two, or three. We're going to heal our third guy over there. The core combat is pretty strategic when it has to be. And in moments where you don't have to use autoplay, it can be pretty cool, actually. But beyond that, for these early levels and for, for grinding and for farming, you're going to want to use that spicy autoplay where it plays itself. But again, I am impressed with the character models themselves and the animation. But that's probably because they're using Unreal Engine 4 and it's Gameville slash um, XL Games. So like I said, a pretty decent budget for this one. We can heal this guy again. And uh, maybe when you're doing raids and stuff and the more difficult content, the autoplay is turned off. But for now, we're turning it back on, so it plays for us anyway. But again, you really can't lose on these early encounters, so it's, it's no big deal on that anyway. Let's get that spicy three star rating. Zero deaths. How are we going to die? Too easy. But again, you can see if we can have points for a gotcha pull. Maybe get a new new character. And, and they level up at the end of the, end of the battle as well. You enhance your gear. Oh god, the tutorial is over. It's going to teach you how to enhance gear now. I do want to show you another bizarre element in this game. This actually launched in October uh, 26th or 27th of uh, 27, uh, 2017. So it's a bit of a new game as of this video at least. So you can see that upgrading system right now. Let's click on this dude. And you can see again, you got a lot of gear slots. Conqueror's Flame Epaulets. It's not It's not a it's not, you know, body armor, it's an epaulet. Completely different. And we can enhance this bad boy with, uh, there you go, with this. I'm sure if you have cash up currency, you can, of course, skip ahead. You can see your combat power over there. It measures your character's overall strength and whatnot. Auto enhance all gear. It makes it even more brain dead if you want it to. Boom, it's doing it for us. Boom, we're, we're, we're good to go. We have gear for this guy we can equip as well. We can craft it. There you go. Uh, must be level one. And you can get crafting resources for completing the stages, and you can use it to make gear for your characters, I guess. Boom, equip everything. Preparing. What does that mean? Okay, it's not, that's not out yet. You can't put on uh, whatever accessory slot that is. There you go. This guy is equipped and good to go. So you can see his runes over here as well. And uh, do we have any runes right now? I don't think we do, but you can see appearance as well. So there's actually cosmetic skins for the characters as well. 
There's actually a good amount of characters in the game. But the most bizarre element of this game is its housing system. I mean, there is housing, but oddly, it doesn't act like housing in most MMOs that you would think. Uh, you can see we got this this dancing cow in the background. Obviously, that's how that's how cows work. Uh, can we do this farm right now? Uh, we can make some butter. Zero out of five. We can't do this right now. The cow shed. There's a cow shed mini game, and it's absolutely bizarre. This dancing cow in the background ends up like drinking his own milk. It makes no kind of sense. We can upgrade our house as well. We need the resources for that, so it gives you something else to work towards, which I guess is kind of cool. There's fishing as well, but I mean, the farming is just unbelievably bizarre. Like, why is this cow? Dancing and when, when you do the mini game, he ends up drinking the own milk in his background. It is completely bizarre. It's kind of the housing system and showing them the stage for now. Okay, let's go do that. Again, the, the core game is pretty on par with other, you know, hero collecting games like this. It's stage based, which I kind of don't like. I kind of wish it was an actual persistent world. Uh, you know, even though a lot of the persistent world MRPs is also auto play. I don't know, it just feels kind of weird to have a stage-based progression, but again, this is not the only game to have this. A lot of games, a lot of mobile, you know, self-proclaimed multiplayer online role-playing games and MRP just have the stage-based progression. The only, I guess the only saving grace, I think, for this one is that you have really smooth gameplay and it looks nice, and you have more customization on the characters than other, other games like this. And it might do well, I mean, it just, still, the PC arcades, even with its flaws, had some really cool elements, like the kind of making your own class by mixing and matching your know, various skill trees and stuff. That was a, a really cool system. <coughs> and you don't really have that in this. And you don't have the sandbox elements either. You know, there's housing. They have this weird housing system, but it's another way to just gather resources, really. It's not nearly as in-depth as the PC version. So, it's unfortunately not... Probably if you're an arcade fan, this is not the arcade you're looking for. And it's not really an MMORPG either, though there are, again, they do both raids and... Uh, territory control elements, but it's it's not terrible either only because you can have some decent customization personally It's not my cup of tea, but I, I do appreciate the the quality graphics and the booby animations and the big boob characters But yeah, and there's storytelling as well actually there's voice acting so it's, it's not the worst game Not my cup of tea, but doesn't really and, and it doesn't again live up to the arcade's name too well And the core combat if it was you know if they didn't have autoplay the core combat is actually pretty cool and engaging honestly like the Actually manually healing your characters is really neat and having to do like clutch moments of healing and aiming your abilities and stuff like AoE hits in the bag or single target damage and The targeting is very strategic and the combat could be really cool I think if autoplay wasn't enabled I think a lot of these mobile games the least they can do is make autoplay disabled on the first run And after the first run if you want to farm it for later on turn on the autoplay But it's weird that you know you can do it right for the gecko personally we can even change the camera angles, I think. Look at that top-down view, this view. Let's go back to... Uh, Alright, there you go. We got a better view of her right there. Can we zoom in on just her? Oh, okay. I do really, I really do wish that the first time you play a level, it just disabled by default and you couldn't turn it on. Because you'd be feel you'd feel a lot more engaged. And like Leveling up your character, getting gear would be more meaningful, too. Otherwise, you can just, you know, just AFK grind these levels anyway and just get free XP. And it really does aim the abilities for you, too, so you really can't screw up. I mean, maybe in like Lineage 2 Revolution, like moving and dodging attacks. I remember the autoplay in Lineage 2 Revolution didn't really dodge attacks at all. And a game like this is not really, you know, real time. You're not actively dodging attacks either. So the autoplay plays really well. Whereas Lineage Revolution and a lot of other autoplay games, you don't dodge attacks. Even in Heroes of Incredible Tales, you have to actually manually dodge attacks sometimes. And you don't have to do that in this game because, again, it's not a, you know, real time movement like that. So it feels very odd. So back to the world map again. Oh, I'm liking, I'm liking the art in this game. Definitely some quality A+. Plus. All right, we got a busty lolly over there with a whip, I think. Quality. And 110 is the boss level, and hopefully that might be a little bit harder. And early on, you have a ton of stamina, so there's no problem with stamina. But you can buy more stamina, and I do hate that games have the stamina system. This limits how much you can actually play. And you got these challenges to get more experience and more goodies. But yeah, if, if you like what you see, you want to give Arcade Begins a try, uh, do, give it a, do give it a chance there. Uh, it's, again, the production value is there. It's not terrible. Not like a cup of tea, but I, I've played worse mobile games. But if you guys want to play Arcade or just learn more about it, do check out the full review on Nimbus.com on the link below. One last quick look at our, our, our champions over here. And of course, they're trying to sell me $50 packs. And yeah, you can see all the characters over here. I, I don't have that, not many, but you can see all the ones I don't own as well. But we can collect all these bad boys eventually. Look, I mean, there's, there's a good chunk of them. And again, each character actually has their own um, skill trees as well, their talent trees. So again, there's that customization at least. But yeah, later guys.